I am in France to learn more about a very special project here at the Museum of La Coupole, where in 1943 the construction of a large above and below ground bunker was begun. It was envisioned as a self-contained V2 rocket factory both for production and launch against British targets. The bunker complex was extensively bombed by the British before it could be brought to use. The dome roof is 5 meters thick, 71 meters across, and weighing 55,000 tons alone. Today, here is a museum dedicated to the site's history and that of the Second World War. I am here today especially to meet one of the French historians who works here, who spent over 15 years with his team writing a very special book about the 9,000 French men and women who were deported to Germany during the war as forced laborers. He's detailing each individual's story. So, so the project was launched in 1998 to, uh, to, to write the story of each people from France who was uh, deported, sent in the uh, Mittelbordera concentration camp in, in Germany. Um, this camp is, is very um, uh, unknown in the in the memory because uh, because it, it's a place where the um, the, the, um, uh, the missiles uh, V2 was yeah. um, was produced by these deportees in very terrible conditions. A lot dies, um, and so the, this uh, this missiles was sent from this place from La Coupole. So the these are all the nine thousand concentration camp prisoners. Yeah. You documented all of the ones from France, yes, and all we, of their stories. We, we write with, uh, with a lot of archive documentation everywhere in France, in Germany, in Belgium, uh, to, to, to write all the story and uh, explain why these people, where do they come from, uh, what was uh, uh, the employment, uh, their family, and, and to write why was they arrested in, in France to, and sent to, to Germany. Um, a lot of them um, help some American pilot uh, uh, yeah. fought in France during the, the, the battlefield and, and they were arrested to, to help this uh, American pilot. So they, they died in this concentration camp. So it's very important to, to memory this, uh, this part of life. You, you literally documented the story of 9,000 people yes. that were forced to live and how many of them died? Um, um, more than the, the half, about um, 60 percent. 60 percent of them died. Um, how, how did you get involved in this? How did this start? Uh, this is an engagement, you say, engagement, um, a memorial engagement um, in front of the, the family and the, the survivor of, the, of this camp who was uh, uh, a lot in, in, the, in the end of the 90s. So, so we we know uh, today the, the story of this camp, but we uh, we didn't know how many of French people were sent, how many died. So it was important, and for all the family today, uh, there is no no um, no sepulture, no you know uh, no uh, no body where you you can do the memory. The ones because, who died just disappeared. Yeah, because they disappeared, it was burned in the uh, in the crematoire in the camp, you know. So uh, so it's important for the family. It's, it's really like a monument. So this book is, is very a monument, you know? Yes. Well, well the, the name, the name yeah. of their grandfather, their, their brother, their husband is right. So it, it was very important. But it, it was very important for, for, to, to understand, uh, again, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the SS administrations of yes. all these systems of concentration camps, because it's one camp, but it's also 40 uh, um, uh, commando co can, uh, other camp who was working for the fusée. So it's very interesting to, to, to understand this uh, mechanic. So what happened is they were arrested for different reasons yeah, a, a uh, lot, throughout French and uh, Belgium. A lot. More of them was resistance in the French resistance, resistance yeah. or British resistance in France, but some was arrested in, in you know, in um, military repression, yeah. very, very large. Uh, some was Yod, some was um, Ziganer. Um, it's interesting when you say resistance that they were sent to labor camps because right. I think most people thought they were just outright shot. No, no, a lot. Uh, about uh, eight, 80,000 uh, people, about 10% mm -hmm. uh, of women also, were, were sent from French to concentration camp in, uh, in German uh, uh, Nazi uh, occupation. So they're taken from, say, France. Yeah. 
Then they get sent to, they get arrested, they get sentenced in some way. In, in, pri in jail, in pri jail. French prisons, uh, was uh, administered by uh, German occupation. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and from 1942 to the end of 1944, uh, they were sent in, uh, in big transport with, uh, in, uh, by, by train uh, in, uh, in all the German concentration camps. Mm -hmm. So, Bourandal, Dachau. And then they go to a collection camp, and then they get sent yeah, to, to different to places to work. To work. To enforce labor, uh, and, yeah. and a lot of died uh, yeah. on work, uh, on enforced labor, yes. So it was, it was and at uh, middle, uh, Dora Middelbau, what, some 35,000, 40,000 died or wor worked? There was all nationalities, there yes. was about uh, uh, 60,000 people was in, in this concentration camp and, and about uh, 30,000 died uh, in 1945. Dorr Mittelbau at Nordhausen was the huge underground rocket production facility that was built into already existing tunnels in Thuringia, central Germany, by enlarging them. It was after the British bombing of Peenemünde that it was clear to the German leadership that the production of V-1, V-2 and eventually jet aircrafts needed to be moved into secure underground facilities. To oversee the creation and operations of this new facility, Albert Speer, Heinrich Himmler and Karl Sauer agreed on the foundation of Mittelwerk GmbH. The company was founded on October 19, 1943 to run the Mittelbau Duo complex. Of course, Hans Kamler was on the board, as was Gerhard Degenkolb, the former head of the Commerz Bank, and Albin Svatsky, who headed up the production of the Tiger tank. He was appointed to run the plant. The first 107 prisoners arrived here from Buchenwald. They were tasked with constructing the actual camp. Soon after, another 1,223 arrived to enlarge the actual tunnel system. Until the end of the war, larger amounts of prisoners and forced laborers from all over occupied Europe arrived here to work on the tunnels and the rockets. Many of them did not survive the ordeal. Towards the end of the war and face of liberation, those capable of walking were sent to other camps. Many did not survive this journey. And on April 3rd, the camp and town of Nordhausen was bombed extensively by British bombers for two days and several thousand more prisoners died, as well as 9,000 inhabitants of the town. The U.S. Army arrived to liberate the camp on April 11, 1945. 400 was set in Penemunge, in first, where there was a forced labor to, to, to assembly, to produce the, fusil, the, the missiles, V2. Yeah. But um, after the, the bombing of the Penemunge place yeah. by the ARF, mm -hmm. uh, all these deportees was transferred to Mittelbordura concentration camp was created after this uh, bombing by the RAF on Penimund. It's, it's a, you know, it's a, um, a consequence yes. of the, the bombing on Penimund. Yeah. Uh, the SS had to, to, to find a new, uh, new site to protect from the bombing, so they, uh, they go to Jorah, and Jorah is um, uh, underground. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, two tunnels, yes. uh, about uh, each about two uh, two kilometers longer, and so the the, uh, the first deportees had to, to to work in this in this tunnel in very bad condition because there was nothing, no water, no uh, no, no, no barracks to, to, to yeah. put them. They, they had to live all, all the time in the in the tunnels, in the tunnel, uh, yeah. very dramatic condition. And a lot yeah, of guys. The, 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 the life expectancy was what three weeks or something, yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. something. For, for, for men who was. Uh, 20 of age and in very good condition. Some was military yeah. from French uh, French army, and and they died in three weeks. Yes. And you printed 9,000 books. Yes. To it's give one of them to each one of the surve yeah. surviving families. It's very important to, to, to tell the, the, the engagement. Yeah. Uh, about the, uh, how editor is a French Cherche Midi editor. It's a big uh, big uh, big. Um, home of edition in, in France, in Paris, and so the, the, the director wanted to, to, to sell it, this book, it's, it's normal, but uh, we, we, we also, he also produced uh, 9,000 uh, of this book, they all have a number, 1 to 9,000, for 9,000 deportees, and today we, we, identify, we identify all the family of this man, and we, we give one exemplar to, to this family, so we, we invite this family here at La Coupole, 
Creole in, in our yeah. French, and we, we, we can explain how we work, how we rewrite the story, and we, we, we give them the, the book. So how many of the 9,000 families have you found? Uh, now we, we, we look for the family, but uh, since uh, one year, we, uh, some genealogists help us, always volunteers, it's important to say it. And now we, we have uh, 1,300 families we, we are in contact. So, so there is, again, a lot of work, but, but it's very important. So we, we, we do a lot of communication in, in press, in all, all, yes. uh, all weekends, so in, it's very... Uh, uh, important to, to talk about it. I was recruited from, from La Coupole because I'm I'm historian, specialist on history of deportations from France. From, so so I, I engage in this, in this project in, and I work on it in about uh, 15 years. Oswald Paul was a dyed-in-the-wool administrator. He studied law and served in the Navy before being recommended to Hitler by Admiral Canaris. Now, putting his 20 years, some plus years of administration experience into action, he managed to successfully standardize the SS accounting operations. Paul was appointed chief of the administrative department in the staff of the Reichsführer himself. He was early to recognize the economic potential of forced labor. Although Himmler's initial concept of the camp system, such as Dachau, was that of rehabilitation of political and criminal prisoners, in the 30s Dachau was considered the model of modern correctional facilities. Violence was under no circumstances allowed against the prisoners then. However, as the war progressed, that would soon change. In 1938, Poole, who at this time was already administrative chief of the SS Hauptamt, accompanied Himmler to a small town of Mauthausen. It was then decided that the SS-operated German Earth and Stoneworks Corporation should begin extracting granite using concentration camp prisoners as laborers. Administrative and financial authority for the camps was transferred to Pohl by 1938. Mauthausen became one of the most profitable concentration camps for Nazi Germany, with more than 11 million Reichsmarks in profit in 1944 alone. In June 1939, Himmler stated that the supervision of the economic matters of these institutions, concentration camps, and their application to work is the responsibility of SS Gruppenführer Pohl. Later, Himmler consolidated all of these offices for which Pohl was responsible into one, creating the SS Main Economics and Administration Office, Wirtschafts- und Verwaltungshauptamt. Pohl's appointment then strengthened his position greatly. Behind Heinrich Himmler and Reinhard Heydrich, he eventually became the third most powerful figure in the SS. He was now in charge of the entire administration and supply for the SS. He controlled 20 concentration camps and 165 labor camps. He was in charge of all SS economic enterprises as well. Because I always said, the SS was run like a business. Yeah. They used slave labor to sell their yeah. labor yeah. to IG Farben, to uh, AG, to others. How, th how did it all work? I think Mitter Bodera is a very good example because it's, it's um, the, the, the first uh, concentration camp with very um, factories, very factories with a, a name, uh, with um, uh, inscriptions in, in, in factory registers, uh, with, with a, a director, a, a German director of the, of the factory. And, and, and in fact, all the, all the work is, is is space to this to this factory, so there is a, an economical report important. So, but but the, the life of the of the people who are to work in this in this factory don't don't matter for the for the SS. So they uh, they can make them die in two three weeks and and make another come from Bournemouth from French and they, they can run plants all, all the time. This uh, these people. You can literally say that. A part of the German economy ran on slave labor. Yeah, all that the SS still made money from because they rented out the slave yeah. labor 
to the big businesses. Yes, all the all the uh, industry productions in Germany from the the, the middle of 1940-42 uh, use uh, um, the the forced labors uh, from uh, mostly from from the east of the uh, yeah. of the area, but but also from from France, from Belgium, from all, all the country, and the 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 the. the, um, the politics programs to, to send people uh, who can work from France, from Belgium, and, and they go in this uh, concentration camp to, to produce uh, uh, military, uh, military development, uh, uh, petrol for, for the army, uh, or, um, and, and plane, uh, plane for, the, for the army. And as Germany was having to deploy more and more people to the front as the war was going worse, yeah. they had to use more and more prisoners of war, more and more deportations, forced laborers from all over the, yeah, the yeah, occupied yeah, countries. Yeah, because a lot of uh, German soldiers was dying, so you, you have to rampalize them, so they, they, they couldn't work in, the, in Germany. So. And these are the 9,000, these are the 9,000 that came from France yeah. and Belgium as well, or just France? Uh, only from France, but, from but France. there were uh, about uh, um, seven, uh, 700 of uh, strangers who was rated in France. So you have, uh, you have, I think you have one American, uh, you, you, have, uh, you have English, you have, Pola, uh, you have Pola, Pologne, uh, Belgium, a lot, uh, uh, more than 20 nationalities you can, you can find. So it's very interesting to, to talk about uh, why these people was in France uh, during the occupation. Why German arrested German people in France and sent them in concentration camp? There is a, a lot of story you can you can use and you can you can work. You, you can explain to, to to new generations. It's it's always it's also um, a book uh, written by teacher and for teachers to, yeah. to 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 explain and to to understand all the um, all the, the periods the, the the occupation and the the deportation. In the concentration camp system you are you are not in the the regulation. Of the of the conventions of uh, of Geneva or, or other, yeah. uh, the people people disappear without yeah. the, the they lose their name. Uh, they, they only become a number in the in this camp. So they have a, they have a number, and but you you have to know that the the administration the SS administration is very very um, we have a lot of documentation because for the SS it was very important to know um, who was the deportees where where he was when he dies because for for the security if there is some escape you you, you need to, to to find them where where they go uh, but also for the economic process it was very important to know um, the, the, the 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 professions of each so you, you can send them and when when you need people it's very important so you we have a lot of documentation it was the SS was project a lot of documentation I can show you um, um, original SS list uh, from French people we used to to, to identify the, the French people um, only only one uh, one minute I have to find it <laughs> These are all your original documents. Yeah, and yeah, we. Yeah, this. Okay. It's only one example, but I can show you. This is original list from the the sub camp of Little Bordeaux. Uh, camp um, name code was Eric. It was Elrich Commando. So uh, you see, Waffen SS, um, uh, 31 of March 1945. And on all this page, you have each day of each day from the the, the beginning of the story of this camp. About uh, 8,000 people was um, forced labor, and about. 85% died, and so th they had to, to, to work uh, hardly in, um, in underground, in, in tunnels, to, to, to prepare the, the installations of factories. So, in this document, each day we know how many there are, how many escape, how many died, the name of, of um, uh, them who died, how many homosexuals in, in the camp, uh, how many road Spaniards, you know it was a communist, a Spanish communist, uh, Jordan, a social, um, and you have also the nationality each day, and we are, we are a uh, uh, few days before the end of the war. So they, they continue to, to produce this slice uh, with the with the name here you have you have the name uh, of the people who, who die in the in the day of the of the list and you have this document for for each day from May 1944 to the end of March 1945. 
and expressing his sentiments regarding the use of prisoners for labor in a memo, Poole wrote, SS Industries have the task to organize a more businesslike, this more productive execution of punishment and adjust it to an overall development of the Reich. Poole paradoxically complained about the deaths of some 70,000 out of 136,000 new concentration camp inmates between June and November 1942, insisting that these deaths were impeding the productive output at the camp's armament factories. In a letter to camp commanders, Poole called for the improvement of quality of life for the inmates. He wrote, we must attend to the prisoner's well-being, not out of a false sense of sentimentality, but because we need them with their arms and legs, for they must help the German people to achieve a great victory, End quote. Some historians have noted that Paul's men prided themselves as a modern administrators and often clashed with prison guards who undermine productivity by beating or killing the prisoners. Yet it was Poole himself who denied increased rations to those performing hard labor in the quarries. Poole worked in tandem with Albert Speer for arms production for the Reich. Satellite camps, which leased out concentration camp laborers, spread as a result of the collaboration between the industrialists and the SS, due in part to both Poole's and Speer's arrangements. Concentration camp inmates were not supposed to be leased out on orders from Himmler, an order Paul ignored as he considered it impractical. By the summer of 1944, control of the concentration camps were removed from Paul's WVHA and control and executive power was instead handed over to local SS officers, which according to Paul occurred for operational reasons. However, it must now be clear that there was such a vast amount of camps with various categories of laborers and due in part to the individual conduct of individual camp commanders and even guards, the treatments of prisoners would vary greatly. And given the directive in 1944, as the Russians approaching the Reich's borders, the bombing of rail and transport and medical facilities, and a failing harvest, it is almost inevitable that the last resources, if they could be found at all, would be those allocated to the labor and concentration camps. And now with the prisoners being evacuated from the eastern camps, it would soon become a further humanitarian nightmare. And it was in this world the 9,000 French deportees found themselves. But when the American troop arrived, all the uh, 4,000 deportees was, uh, was away because uh, the SS uh, takes them in the, you know, the, the death march in, yeah. the, in transport and a lot died during yeah. this, this period. And, uh, only a few parts of them was liberated by American troops. Forces labor, uh, prisoner of war, Russian, women work here, and a lot of uh, French uh, forces labor, but no deportees. There was no with, uh, you know, the, the, um, the uniforms uh, yes. um, as deportees. Uh, so who, who did work here, and what did they do? What, what, how did this, this start? This, uh, this bunker was, um, was built by forces labor, but f a lot French. It was, uh, you know, uh, the, the requisitions um, mm -hmm. in French about uh, men who, who was young and, and could, could work. And so uh, they, they were not sent in Germany, like, like a lot, but they were sent to, to, to build this, this, this big bunker uh, uh, from 1943 to the end of 1944. So you said you had women that was working here. Yeah. Uh, Th to me, this looks like a lot of very heavy, hard labor, yes. pouring cement and rebar and digging. What did the women prisoners do? Or? We know by, by testimony a lot. We mm. don't have a lot of uh, archive documentation about the constructions of, of La Coupole, of this bunker, mm. uh, because it was a secret project. That a lot of documentation was destroyed. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we, we know we have some, some part of the, of the story, and we know by testimony there was a, a Rus, um, Russian woman who, maybe for, um, uh, um, for the, the food to, in, the, in the kitchen, to. Yeah. Uh, uh, we know that um, about uh, 8,800 8, um, 8 uh, forced la labor was working here. Um, and some, some of, of them die, but, but they, uh, um, often they die of the, when the, um, uh, during the, the airplane attack of the RAF uh, on the side to, to bomb the bomb. 
so what do we have here? We have this enormous reinforced uh, dome for the V2 rockets that was built into an old chalk mine. Right. What did they finish here? Those, the site never be used by them. And, um, never um, uh, V2 missile was, was launched from here. But the, the, the German troops had to, um, uh, to, to go away on, on July, uh, August 1944 before they, they could finish the, the bunker. They, they were planning on thousands of square meters of underground tunnels, and how much how much did they manage to finish? The, oh, a few 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 weeks, and they need to to, to finish uh, about um, uh, one one thousand and five hundred meters of uh, tunnels was uh, in in place. Okay. We, we can see it, and the, this big dome. Uh, protects this cupola, protects this, protects um, uh, the, uh, where the, the German should um, prepare the, the missile before they, they launch in, in, on London. Yes, because none of the bombs came through no. the roof. They were all destroying the, the launch sides. Yes, yes, but they never destroyed the, the bunker. A, a lot of projects was launched in 1944 and they, they, they never could finish, so, so a lot of people died for nothing. And a lot of them were secret, so we don't know what they really no, were doing. But, uh, we could say uh, about in in all uh, them dies and never never come back in France. Uh, we know that uh, once one thousand and three hundred disappear. We, we we can't say today uh, where they die exactly the, the the date or the place where they where they die. And we we always hear of the big camps. We hear of Auschwitz and Dora Mittelbau and. We hear of the big camps, but there were thousands of smaller satellite yeah. camps. Uh, only for, for the, the Mittelbau concentration camps, there is four, uh, uh, 40, uh, 40 small camps who, who depend uh, administratively uh, of Mittelbau So, So these people, when the, um, the factory in Jura is, is producing the, the, the V2 missiles, uh, th they were sent in a new, uh, new camp uh, around Dora to, to, to engage, to, to work on new projects. Uh, a lot of them is, is, is to, to prepare a new factory in underground, uh, in, in tunnels, in galleries, and, and so they, they die in, in very bad condition for the, the last years of the war. We're looking at a Germany that at this point has been bombed out everywhere, everything, food, transportation, medical, just for their own. So of course the prisoners in camps were not the highest priority when it comes to food and medicine, mm. obviously. Mm. So when the, they, they were in such bad shape that when they were finally liberated, they still couldn't. The Allies couldn't save their lives in time. No, oh, so and some, a lot of them uh, died. A lot after. died after the liberation in in uh, in Bergen Belsen. It's very important. We know that after the liberation of Bergen Belsen, about uh, uh, nineteen thousand people died after the British liberated the, the camp. So and they a lot disappeared because there was uh, so much dying. They, they could um, uh, they could write the name the name before. They, they had to, 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 burn the, to burn the people, so um, yeah. 19,000 disappear after the liberation. That, that's just terrifying to think. That, that, that's the ultimate tragedy of yeah. having been liberated yeah. and so, still. Some, some of them could, could write uh, to their family, I, I am liberated, I'm going to come back in France, and after disappear, and never knew. Yeah. So what are the family reactions when you started this? And they, they, um, they're very... Really, um, Impress, impress, impressioned by, by, because they learn a lot of things about the, the, um, um, all the times they don't know the story of the of their grandfather of their father. They know they were resistant. They know they were deposed. But we we could find all the um, uh, all the, the date where there was transfers. When when sometime when they go in the. Um, um, how to say in the in the reverse? It was um, um, the the place where you with the, the medical in, in the camp. Yeah. We know when they go when they die. Sometime um, uh, eighty years after, we, we can we can tell them the the, the really place and the, the really date where the, the, the man dies. So it's very important today yeah. for him. And very important that with this book they can they can translate to their 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 children. It's very important. Yes, today. it is. I could write the story of um, a man with uh, his name is Abel Tiron. 
So he was resistant, French resistant. He was sent to Mittelbodera, and, and during the, the death march, he, he finished to arrive in Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. You know, and and his son was was um, uh, convinced, convinced. Was, oh, uh, he was sure. He was sure that his father died on the uh, um, uh, before uh, before the liberation of Bergen-Belsen by the English troops. Mm -hmm. You know, and he, he he learned to his children this story and and say, uh, your grandfather never sees the, the liberation. And with the documentation aujourd'hui, with the, the the archive, with the research, we could prove. To, to this man, that his father was was died two days after the liberation. So, so he, he could understand that his father sees the liberation. What he, he was fighting in French to, to liberate to, uh, uh, to 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 liberate his, his his family and his country, he could see the liberator in in Bergen. And it, it changed a lot his life. It's very important. The Chanteloup. French, French resistance. His story is in the book, and he, he could recognize on the on the picture. It's him. So, so it's, he came it's, here, and he's yeah, dead. it's crazy. And this photo is really famous photo that. Yeah. And um, a lot of them are French deportees. Their story is in the book we, we could show. And this one. Uh, tell, it's me. Uh, I am. Uh, he was Leon Navarro. Uh, it was a French student from the, um, the University of uh, Clermont-Ferrand. He, he was resistant and he was sent in Mittelbodera concentration camp. And in, at the end of the 19s, he recognized on this photo. And he, he explained how it showed because um, some some article after after the the, the publication of this photo say uh, it's a, it's a resistance. He, he he want to show. He, he, he don't agree, so he turned he turned the face. But he said no. We we was we were afraid, and this is the photograph who asks me to turn to turn the face and look and look in front of. Him. Could they write home? Could they write letters when they were yeah, in the camps? But, yes, there, there was a lot, but they had to pay the the stamp. Yeah. Uh, they had to pay the stamp, and the, um, the letter had to, to be written in German, and there was, um, you know, uh, how to say in English, censure? censorship, censorship, yeah, of censorship. course, yeah. Right. So, so they, could, they could say anything, and, and they, they couldn't write after the, the French was liberated, so after the end of uh, August 1944, there is no news no. for family. So, okay, how, how did they get money for stamps? Were there camp money? Yes, yeah, so, so, there is a, a money system in the in the concentration camps. They, they can uh, they can have money. You have metal board around money, so they, they can buy uh, uh, they can buy the, the stamp to to, uh, to write uh, to write in French. But there is nothing nothing to buy. In fact, in the camp. So yeah, so they were issued a little bit of money every day for work. Yeah, uh, but uh, not yeah. all. Only the, the specialists to the work specialists. to work well. This is your enormous book. Yeah, it's not mine, it's a collective project. So. But if it, if it hadn't been for you, it may, may not have happened. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. You've got you to take a little modesty. Um, this is a, this is a yeah. really, really, really special project. This, this drawing was made in the concentration camp by, by a French resistance whose name was Léon Delam. And we are, we are in contact with the family of, of the three, we, even with the young. It was Jack Claire, the, the young boy. So, so we, we, we invite the, the family here for the next big ceremony is here in, in La Coupole in September. And all of this was volunteers? We have to say that the, 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 the book is, is sell in library in of Luzon, course, of course, here, yeah. But all the the money, all yeah. the money is given to a foundation, a French foundation in Paris, who, who uh, foundation for the memory of deportations, who, who work on memory of all deportees yeah. and and do uh, uh, projects with with education, with school to, to to talk and to remember this this memory. So we, nobody, me, <laughs> nobody <laughs> wins money on this book. And that, uh, I think that that is so important to stress that good deeds are, de good deeds are done by, uh, by by volunteers who want to preserve history. Yeah. Also here in La Coupole, uh, we have the, um, all the, the archive from the, the associations who was created just in 1945 with the survivor and to help the family. So uh, a lot of um, letters was uh, right from the family uh, on this association in uh, uh, 1945 in July, very quickly after the, the, the end of the war, to, 
to, to have information about the, their father, their husband, their grandfather. So we, we have letters. See, that's, that's amazing that they started organizing already immediately after. Yeah. Because so many yeah. other camps, especially in the East, they just disappeared and went home. This as association is here to, to help the, the family to, to, to make them in, in contact, in relation with survivors, so they, 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 can, they can show a picture and say, did you see my, my husband, did you see my, uh, my yeah. grandfather, and do you know where he is? So. Are there any of them still alive today? Yeah, we, we, we are in contact with uh, about uh, 15, uh, 15 uh, already. Right. So they, they all have uh, more than nine, 90. 95, uh, but uh, we, we, uh, we could uh, um, go to see them, to give them the book where is uh, their story, oh, nice. and also they could find the story of their, their, their friends, they, maybe some, a lot of their friends died, so they could see the, the, the pictures, the photography of them, and, and they could find. So we, 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 we go to, to, to meet them and to, 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 how to, say, to, to record their testimony, we, yeah. we ask and questions, so it's very important for us to, to, to give this, this memory, to conserve this memory. You've only identified 1,300 families so far, and that means there are thousands of families out there that may have moved somewhere else in the world. Yeah. And since I know there's a lot of you guys that have a deep interest in this, and a lot of you have families in this, that may have lived in France or in Europe and have disappeared during the war or was ended up in camps coming through France. Yeah. I want you to all start reaching out to those family members and if you think your family or your grandfather or great-grandfather or grandmother was arrested and deported from France, uh, please get in touch with this man and see if we can connect uh, a book and a story with the family because a lot of them moved probably to, to America, a lot of them emigrated to America and since the book is in French, yeah. uh, how many nine thousand? How many pages? Thousand pages? Uh, Two thousand and six uh, six hundred. So it's it's twenty six millions of signs. So it'll be a little while before it gets translated. Yeah. <laughs> but if you have a family member that you think might be in this book, I think we can translate that section yeah. pretty quickly if yeah. we have to. And I, I want you all to ask around and look at some of the older members of family, see where they were, and if they were here, get in touch with that man and connect the dots. Pleasure.